Alex, we got to start with you because this is not just about the sell-off in commodities overall. Right. It's partly a story of Brazil falling out of favor with investors, but it's really a story of someone who made really big promises and priced everything to perfection and then failed to deliver on it. Well, you know, Matchy Miller, these billionaires, like nobody else does, their personalities, what makes them tick, not just what makes them billions. What were some of the unique characteristics well, of Ike Batista? Well, it's really Ike Batista's hubris. I mean, this is a man who went out and actually claimed that he was going to become the richest man in the world, that he was going to pass Carlos Slim, and he knew the date that he was going to pass Carlos Slim. It was 2015. He told Bloomberg that he, a couple he, years ago. So that might have been a jinx. So he was always out there touting himself, and he did, the same thing was true with what he did with his investors. He had six publicly traded companies. They were all commodities based. They basically said, we have this much oil under the ground. Turns out they never had it. Investors suffered a great deal as a result of that. Now he's paying the price. But Alex, there's something specific. There's a, there's a catalyst here having to do with the Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Fund that really pushed him into some, some big losses. Right. Well, last year, in March last year, he sold a $2 billion stake in his uh, commodities conglomerate to this Sovereign Wealth Fund. And this was kind of the the peak for Batista. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he sold it at the time a sign of investor confidence in his ability to construct this empire of interlinking uh, commodity and logistics companies. But it turned out that there were a lot of uh, protections built into this investment. And one of them was that the Sovereign Wealth Fund had the right to turn it into debt from equity. And after his companies lost, you know, 90% of their value, they decided to do that. So there were some funding problems, clearly, with his companies. There was a the problem of the Brazilian economy, the commodity sell-off. Matt, have you ever seen a billionaire lose yeah. so many billions this, in this short this, of a time? This, this is a historic moment in terms of actual wealth loss. More than $30 billion, $35 billion has evaporated from one guy's fortune. You've never seen that. You've seen uh, Carlos Slim drop. $12 billion this year as he's had all these problems with America Mobile and he goes from number one to number two. But to actually see an entire fortune of $35 billion a race, it's never happened. I wonder, Alex, is he a popular man in Brazil? Do people like him? Do they hate him? <laughs> they probably he's, hate him now. He's losing him money. He's a bit of a love-hate figure. He, uh, when I spoke to him uh, last year, he said that he exemplifies a new Brazilian dream of entrepreneurial success. He has more than 1.3 million Twitter followers. He wrote a best-selling uh, business slash self-help book. Hmm. So he really was the symbol of wealth in Brazil. Now, with his decline, people have been taking a sort of perverse pleasure in that. Yeah, I'll say. And, and Matthew Miller, he's still worth what? 200 million. 200 million dollars, so long as you don't find any more debt. Um, so if there's a lot of there's a lot of sticky things that go on, and as fortunes fall, you sort of have to worry about the fact that they're going to have to take on more debt to cover whatever they're owed. 